Hello, my name is Paul Flemmons. I work for the Australian Museum and I'm talking to you today about crowdsourcing in citizen science, 10 years of Digivolve. I'm coming to you from Darawal country today and I'd like to pay my respects to their leaders past, present and emerging. So today's talk, uh, I want to uh, cover crowdsourcing and how it relates to citizen science, a bit of the history of Digivolve, what Digivolve offers and uh, the achievements, learnings and the future of Digivolve. So we all have a fair understanding of what um, citizen science is and a definition of it from the AXA website. What's crowdsourcing? Crowdsourcing is has a number of different definitions, but I, this is my favourite. Crowdsourcing is an online distributed problem solving and production model. The term was first coined in 2006 by Jeff Howe in uh, Wired magazine. And when he coined it, he was referring more to uh, having um, people online working for companies and doing small jobs and amounts of money. And one of the websites he, refer, he sort of may have been referring to was Mechanical Turk, which was made by Amazon. It was a place where, where sorry, people could make money by doing small tasks. But that wasn't the ethos that suited what we were trying to do at the Australian Museum. Um, there were other examples of crowdsourcing. There was Trove, um, transcription of newspapers, um, the archive, uh, transcribing um, the National Archive, there was Herbaria at Home, which is an English um, crowdsourcing website for transcribing um, sheets. There was my favourite, Old Weather, which was on Zooniverse, and it um, was for transcribing uh, old ship's logs to get an understanding of historical weather. So in terms of the history of Digivol, the motivation and drivers for Digivol was the need to digitise our collections to make them accessible for a whole range of applications, including understanding environmental change, climate change, and contributing to conservation planning and biodiversity. Um, a classic uh, piece of writing on the use of primary species and occurrence data by uh, Arthur Chapman uh, clearly describes uh, how important primary species data is. And so collection data from museums is seen as primary species data. And it, it's, uh, it's used in everyday life for survival, for food and shelter, through education and learning, to pleasure and recreation. Most of us rely on these data without even thinking about uh, them or even knowing they exist. So Digivol was about getting that data. So the problem was governments and communities were uh, demanding access to um, this primary species occurrence data held in museum collections. However, all our efforts at obtaining uh, funding and resources through tr traditional funding streams had proven fruitless. So we needed to be a bit more creative in what we were trying to achieve. So um, at the Australian Museum, we came up with the idea of having um, volunteers take photos of images on site of our collections, and then putting them online so crowdsourcing could help us transcribe those specimen labels. Um, the first uh, version of Digivol was actually called the Biodiversity Volunteer Portal. Uh, the Australian Museum and the Atlas of Living Australia got together to um, uh, develop that initial crowdsourcing website. And we had online volunteers transcribing label information on those. So that's uh, what the original Biodiversity Volunteer Portal um, uh, website design. Uh, the Atlas of Living Australia and the Australian Museum continue to collaborate in, in running Digivol. Um, this was the first actual uh, website for Digivol. This was uh, what a transcription, um, a virt what we call a virtual expedition looked like. And um, this was uh, some other versions of um, the Biodiversity Volunteer Portal before it actually became an, um, now known today as Digivol. So this was the first version of Digivol. And now this is what Digivol looks like. It's a more, it's a slicker, more professional looking website. Um, so what does Digivol offer? Um, the important thing is for institutions around the world, we offer a free digitization platform where any institution uh, can join up with Digivol, have their own institutional page, branding, and, and set up and run their own expeditions and manage their own volunteers. There's a whole range of different um, application templates. I'll show you more of them in a moment. And we provide training and support for those institutions to use Digivol. So what does Digivol offer its volunteers? Well, this is the important part because without the volunteers, we don't get anything done, of course. So diversity of tasks, um, the specimen labels, the whole range of different collections from institutions around the world, 
There's historical documents, field notes, registers, minutes, journals. And there's Wildlife Spotter, which uh, provides opportunities to, for in, image interpretation, species identification, species interaction, recording species interactions, species behaviour, and identification of traits from images for making them easier to search for on the web. So here's a, a number of the templates uh, that are offered on Digivol. This one's a pretty standard um, specimen digitization template. There's historical document templates. There's the, um, the geo-referencing tools that go along with each of those templates. So we can have the location recorded for each of those um, uh, where the specimens were found. We have species identification templates where volunteers are asked to identify the species uh, in the image. We have behavioural templates where a range of different questions can be asked about the behaviour of animals in a particular image. The same for species interaction. Questions can be asked about how species in an image are interacting. In this case, it's uh, what was predating on a particular uh, plant species, which is an endangered species. And then there's species traits, extracting information about um, traits of different uh, things in, in the images so as they can be made more easily searchable. What else does Digivol offer? Well, to volunteers, there's gamification elements which are offered to volunteers. We have a leaderboard, we have badges which uh, volunteers can earn, we have expedition roles which they take on as they do more and more transcriptions within ex uh, the expedition. We also have um, level, different levels of engagement for the volunteers. So when they first come on Digivol, they, they might be just involved in transcribing labels. But then as they become, they become more experienced, we, we may invite them or volunteer. Um, Institutions may invite them to be involved in validation of the transcriptions done by other volunteers. We have a forum for uh, interaction between volunteers and with um, volunteers with staff. Uh, and we have a newsletter for keeping uh, well, volunteers up to date with what's going on with Digivol and how the data that's been captured through Digivol has been used. And we have a notebook so each volunteer understands what they've captured, uh, the badges uh, they've earned, and the different species data that they've captured for, digi for institutions that use Digivol. So what have we done over the 10 years of Digivol in terms of numbers? Well, the numbers are very impressive. Um, we've had over 10,000 volunteers spread across specimen labels, historical documents and wildlife images. Uh, we've had over 70 uh, institutions, different institutions use Digivol. And in the last 12 months, more than 30 have used Digivol. In terms of transcription, so um, in terms of specimen labels, we've had over a million specimen labels transcribed at an average of about three minutes per, per task. For historical documents, we've had over 180,000 historical documents um, transcribed, and they, they take quite a bit longer than labels, it's 17 minutes per task. And wildlife images are much shorter tasks, they're 27 seconds per task, but we've had over 7 million uh, wildlife images uh, in. Um, image identifications done through the Wildlife Spotter component of Digivol. And when you start to add those numbers up, um, you get to understand how much uh, our volunteers are contributing through Digivol. So uh, around about 112,000 hours, which is equivalent to 73 person years, have been contributed to specimen label transcription. Historical documents, it's been over 78,000 hours, which is around about 51 person years. And for wildlife images, um, we're looking at over 103,000 hours, which is equivalent to 67 person years, roughly. So there's a total estimate of how much people have contributed through Digivol to uh, digitising all these collections. You're looking at about 200 person years. That's an enormous contribution from our volunteers. Uh, Digivol has been recognised for its management of volunteers and for its engagement of volunteers over the years, both those awards being received in 2015. So what have we learnt about our vol volunteers over the 10 years of Digivol? Um, well, we know the motivations vary. Most are motivated by contributing and making a difference. Some by the competition and gamif gamification, which I mentioned before, the leaderboards and the badges and the different roles that can be achieved through the numbers of transcriptions done. Some are motivated by responsibility and helping others. So the forum, I'm sure, motivates um, some of our users to be involved more, more deeply in, in helping others um, through Digivol. 
we know the uh, our volunteers appreciate having a diversity of activities and subjects, um, and that's why we strive to uh, provide that diversity in terms of different institutions. We make it available to different institutions and the different types of tasks available. We know they are incredibly giving of their time. Um, uh, many of our volunteers contribute every day um, and many hours every week. And many have been contributing for the whole 10 years of Digivol. We know they don't like their time being wasted or taken for granted as part of the giving of their time. So if there's something if the site's down or there's something wrong with the site or um, then they really want that to be uh, resolved quickly. So that's an important learning for uh, for all citizen science projects, I guess. We know they're hungry for knowledge and understanding. Um, so that's important uh, why we have the um, the newsletter and other ways of giving them feedback on how their contributions are being used uh, for science. So what are our future goals for Digivol? Um, it's important that we continue to find new challenges for our volunteers. And so in the, the coming months, we're going to be uh, looking at trying to incorporate audio tasks into that array of different activities that volunteers can do through Digivol. Um, we're looking at finding what deeper ways of engaging our volunteers, um, increasing their skills through training and opportunities for more responsibility. Uh, and that's really important in terms of trying to um, uh, take them to the next level in their, their um, understanding of the scientific process and also the contribution of what they're doing to the projects that are run through Digivol. Um, we're really looking to make Digivol more effective and efficient for science. So in incorporating artificial intelligence to create a hybrid transcription and species identification system where we combine um, machine learning artificial intelligence with the efforts of volunteers, our, our citizen scientists, to um, take uh, the, the Digivol to the next level in terms of the amount of um, images and transcriptions that can be processed, but also the level of interaction which um, many of the volunteers will get frustrated by the numbers of null images, etc., that come through, particularly in the Wildlife Spotter uh, project. And having the idea would be to have AI take the drudgery out of crowdsourcing by removing those null images so volunteers can focus on more complex data capture tasks, which uh, are more valuable for science in terms of the, the amount of information they can extract from them. So that's the future goals of Digivol. Um, and that's really all I've got to say today. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I'd really like to thank the Australian Museum and the Atlas of Living Australia for funding Digivol over the, the 10 years. It's been an amazing collaboration, which has um, been very powerful for uh, allowing a project like Digivol to run for that long a period of time. Um, I'd like to thank all the Digivol volunteers that have been involved. Um, they're, we would have nothing without their efforts, and their efforts are really significant when you look at that 200 um, person years that have been contributed through Digivol. And I'd really like to thank the Digivol team uh, who have be, been involved um, over those years, uh, Rand Stevens, Adam Woods, Chris Dunstall, Leonie Prater, Daniel Norvey, uh, and from the ALA, Peter Brenton, Dave Martin, David Baird, Simon Baer, Nick Dostromidius, and Mark Wilston. Uh, thank you for your time today, and um, thank you.